Welcome to Never a Dull Moment, and I'm very happy to share with you another edition of Chasing Unicorns, but more importantly, my first Hanyaki. So, Hanyaki knives are quite unique, and uh, we, we've we never owned one. We actually own two now. So oh. we're presenting to you uh, something quite special, and believe it or not, we're prepared to cut food with it, so I'm a little nervous and scared. Hence the. Yeah, I don't you look know so other, serious. Uh, like, it's okay. it is kind of serious. So um, you're gonna see when you see the finish of this knife, you're gonna be like, "Wow, are you really gonna cut something with that?" So um, there remains to be seen. So this particular knife is uh, white number two steel, and you're used to seeing knives on the show that are cladded. They are surrounded by other metal. This entire knife is made of one steel. And this particular knife is made by Yoshikazu Aikida. It is the only knife we have by him. And this is pretty much what he specializes in. So it's definitely my privilege to share with you my first Hanyaki knife. So this is a 210 millimeter polished to a mirror finish. Um, our friend Bones always leaves a nice little note thanking us and adding it uh, to the collection. He knows that we are chasing unicorns. So, uh, and as he says in there, <laughs> another one off the list. <clears throat> this particular ebony handle, octagonal in shape. And of course, you're gonna see that it looks Quite different. Whoa, now they have to see me. Yep, you can't not see me. It's a little too mirrored. It's mirrored. To not see me. Now I see you. <laughs> so this particular knife is made of white number two. There are only four blacksmiths in the world that make Hanyaki knives in white steel. If you see the wavy line, which my wife will do her best to show you the wavy line down the middle, what you need to know is when this knife is heat treat, the knife is first put in the heat to reach a certain temperature and then clay is bonded to the spine of the knife and then the clay will, that's where the pattern comes in. The clay will then insulate the knife when it's heat treated again, so that the edge of the knife heated to a different temperature will have a different hardness than the back of the knife. So that way the back of the knife can take all of the vibration and be softer. So that wave pattern is significant as to where the heat of the knife the hardness of the knife differs mm -hmm. is on that. Okay, so um, the other unicorns, are, you know, not, I haven't been used. <laughs> and, I think uh, he's gonna have an attack or something. So <laughs> no, this is this is a knife. This is for the house. So the interesting things that'll be to learn um, in particular are um, it's it's going to get a patina. So it's going to lose, and then at some point we oh. will have to learn how to restore the mirror finish. And that is part of this journey that I've been on, that you've been sharing with us, and that we will learn how to do it. Whether it can be done on stone, or whether I have to just you know get really fine sandpaper, or whether I use diamond emulsion in a cloth. Um, but we will get there, and we will get there together. There might be more traditional people out there who complain, but oh well. But today we are going to use this Hanyaki knife. We're gonna first do some tests um, on the sharpness and then we're gonna pause because as you can see, it's definitely gonna be packed in packing oil to protect it from any type of patina or rust that could have happened on the way. So there's no oxidation. So we are definitely going to remove any oil and then we're gonna cut up some food because my wife is hungry and she needs dinner tonight. And so we've got some things that we're gonna prepare for her and we're gonna share that with you. So as per our tradition, let's see how sharp this knife comes. <clears throat> we 
you gotta turn the power on first, that would be helpful. Okay, so we are set up and ready to go. Okay, so we will test it again. Oh, that did the wrong thing. Now I know not all blacksmiths sharpen their knives to a certain point. It's pretty consistent. Well, that so it'll be interesting to see what it does with the food. I don't think we have anything crazy hard. Well, so it's going to be interesting because we're going to wash the knife and get any oil off of the knife and then just make sure that nothing nothing is um, is keeping that from happening. I am going to go ahead and grab a piece of paper <coughs> just to see if it tells a different story. It's got some noise and so it's not necessarily so basically what we've learned is we got a knife that is forged and mirror polished but is going to be up to us to put the edge on it now I'm not sure if that is the tradition and hopefully this is going to be one of those um, those episodes where you learned what we learned you learned it live with us so let's wash the knife okay. and go from there because suddenly it got sharper but one of the things that I'm looking at is like okay is this one of those knives that we turn around and put the edge on is this the blacksmith that says that I'm great at forging polishing and everything but was the knife supposed to come with an edge that's extremely sharp or not we will find out so how about we not pause that way people don't think there's a good movie magic and okay. i didn't sharpen the knife okay um so we're just you guys are just gonna hang along and i'll sing some jeopardy music for you while you're waiting <laughs> and we're gonna do some soap and water on the knife I'm trying, I'm trying to stay off camera because yeah it's okay so we're gonna do soap and water on the knife i will get another uh thing to test the edge to see if it gets sharper once it's been washed which you know we've never done that before and I we've never done that before and i don't know that if it's going to help it or not i don't think we've ever had a knife come in at 300. so we're giving them like the benefit of the doubt that you know did we do everything to give it Sorry i've also never owned noise. a hunyaki knife Yeah, go ahead. She's like afraid to wipe it down with what? Our printer's talking over. Oh, there. our printer is printing some information that we need for another show that we're shooting for you this afternoon. We don't lie on here, we just do, man. No, I just didn't know that you had told it to print or something. So yeah, like, I needed why is it going? Yeah, I definitely needed to know some information for later. Okay. There you go. Okay. Hold on, let me get the other camera. My wife's getting her camera ready, so. A bit, yeah. So we got a little bit better. Okay. Gonna cut now. Yeah. So we got sub 300, but not around 200. So let's see if that improved at all. No. It's still got some noise. It's still got... Catches noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannot push, that's for sure. But it seems to be sharpest right in the middle. Okay. Okay. So, 
on another episode, we're I'll be like, hey, sharpening, sharpening hun yaki. Who, who knows? That might be something I shoot later on the day to be like, wow. Okay, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. We have a cutting board handy, and I'm going to cut some stuff with the knife as it comes. So my wife has decided she's going to make some soup and we don't want any of the uh, the not so pretty. My wife has requirements. And, and I did the end too, the other end too, the other end also. Okay. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. We want it. Yeah, it's diced. Okay, honey. Thanks, babe. So it's got a little bit of a, a rock. It, what, okay, you're holding it like slightly, not straight, straight up. Lean it back towards you a little bit. There you go. Hey, you can see the camera. Yay. He cuts food way faster than I do. And the knife is performing well for the task it's being given. Plus, he gets to play with his toys. Yeah. But if you guys haven't had a chance to see the spine, um, you can check that out. Bam. Yep, just keep it straight. Mm -hmm. yep, pretty much the same. Right the very end. Okay. Okay. What kind of soup are we having tonight, honey? It's uh, like a chicken and white bean concoction. That yeah. I remembered most of the ingredients for. <laughs> Careful. Careful. Careful, Speedy Gonzalez over there. I am with the knife. I am one with the knife. Do you need something to wipe it off or is it no, doing okay? we're good right now so far. We haven't had anything acidic. So she went and got these beautiful carrots she's excited about. She's cleaned them already. Yeah, my pe I peeled off. I couldn't think. I'm like, that word would be what? And that, yeah, same dice. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think right there is probably where I felt like it could use the, the sharpness was okay. just wedging right there, like right there. Just the density of the carrot. The, yeah. That's when you want that super sharp bite. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not always a rocker. A lot of times I'm a chopper, so like... I would be like this, but this knife seems to be it seems a, easier a good for rocking rock. knife. Yeah. The octagonal handle is comfortable. I'm not having soup. Nope. It feels good to wipe the food away from the blade. You can tell that the it's entire smooth. thing was is thin. Mm -hmm. um, what I had heard about a lot of hanyaki knives were that the knife itself is quite thick. So it'll be interesting to me to um, to put the edge on it. For some anybody asking me, I mean, somebody's going to have a question, okay? And the question is going to be: Are you going to continue? Are you going to put a secondary bevel on it? Or are you going to flat grind it? Now, since I am not known for being a knife polisher. I think I need to do what I know inside the realm of my capability, which is I am going to end up putting a secondary bevel on the knife. And then as I get better, I will blend that to make it more con, con um, vex. Um, but for the purposes of using the knife, I will end up putting like another bevel on here to get it really sharp. 
but technically what I should be doing is, and what I could do, and I'll tell you what, back up for a second, let me just talk to everybody. I think what I could do is, we're going to be doing episodes shortly on Japanese natural stones. And what I could do is on my super high finished stones, I could raise a slurry on those stones and just rub the knife on it to see if I can hone the edge. As a matter of fact, now that I just said that, even doing something like taking a honing rod might make the knife just a little bit better. Um, and we'll see uh, before I actually have to get into the possibility of messing up the finish on this knife. So I'll definitely look at the possibility of just uh, stropping the knife on some diamond emulsion compound or a honing rod or a really high-end fine natural stone and see if I can refine the edge a little bit without having to put a secondary bevel. But if I have to put a secondary bevel, I will until I get better at knife polishing. So for those of you who might invest in something Hanyaki, I would, you know, remember what you're buying. You're buying, a, you know, the mono steel that's with the two heat treat, the mirror finish and the craftsmanship. You are not always buying an edge or what's known for the sharpness as we have found out today. Okay, so I will finish some of these carrots off camera no. for you. Well, I was going to say the, the mango on a separate cutting board or do it. Yeah, you can, we can do those later. I'm not worried okay. about that. I just didn't know. If, yeah, we'll just do it. Yeah, go ahead and do your onion and, and we'll call it a day, dear. Ooh, but then we're doing the onion, which means. Yeah, the onion's going to create some patina, guys. Which is the, you know, the scary, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're doing that. Others. So. It is what it is, and that's part of knife ownership. And if you don't know, it's a thing. So my wife's probably gonna filming it to see if there's any time lapse photography if a patina is gonna start happening. Uh, there's several tricks to get rid of the patina uh, to help fight it. One would be squeeze some lemon juice on it and use the peel of the lemon to help remove it. Another trick would be um, barkeep, barkeep's friend. Why that sticking so much? The skin. It's okay. Still. It's okay. Um, it just happens. But um, one of the tricks that I like that Burnell Cutlery does is if you have like a shaving brush, is to get a slurry from one of your fine natural stones. And uh, okay. I'm getting my you don't show have show, show them for me. Show, look at me for a second. I'm yeah. getting my stomach out of the way. I don't want to go like this and the point hit oh, me. Right, so I am moving to the side. Yeah, because that's sketchy, dude. I am aware of my skills. Now, I, we would, what my wife was alluding to earlier was should she get a, um, like a wet paper towel ready? And we're going to go ahead and show you the patina that's forming on the knife. And if you're not ready to have your pretty knives not so pretty anymore and celebrate the patina, you do not want to own a carbon steel knife. So... Let me uh, clean it and you can see what we've got going on, folks. There it is. <sighs> so I would tell you that the patina helps to tell the story and it's definitely going to push you a little further as far as learning how to take care of your knife. Um, I think my wife could tell you if she, you're, if she could see my disposition. There's a gut wrenching. There's a turning. There's a joy of it's it is done. There is what have we done? <laughs> and there is on a, a unicorn. What what are we going to do? Um, so Akita knives are available. They they only come out in very small batches. When they come out, people grab them. They do. I am looking forward to working with this knife. Uh, to what expense it will cost me to educate myself is a other, another story and you need to be able to afford that adventure. Um, 
Is owning one the end all be all? I mean, they're beautiful knives. Is it a high performance knife? That's gonna be up to me. Because it didn't come in, it came in the least sharpest of all the knives we've ever shown on the show, except for something we got from China in one of the very first episodes. Mm. <coughs> Did it come in gorgeous? Yes. Did it feel amazing? Sure. Did it perform on the food? Great. It did. Now we're going to have fun making it amazing and we'll share that episode with you as well. Thanks for checking in with us on our first Hanyaki, Chasing More Unicorns as always. Friday nights at 8 o'clock we bring you more episodes. As always, God bless. <laughs>